Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Ginger Rogers, Edward Arnold, John Howard, and Joan Perry in Fifth Avenue Girl. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One way of staying out of trouble is to follow this rule. Don't give advice when you're asked for it. And never, under any conditions... Lend a helping hand to a stranger. You'll never be misunderstood, but you'll never have any friends, and you'll probably lead a very dull and useless life. Our play tonight, Fifth Avenue Girl, is the story of a young lady who left that rule behind her on a lonely park bench one day, got into all kinds of trouble, won friends, influenced people, fell in love, and lived happily ever after. The young lady's played by Ginger Rogers, who created Fifth Avenue Girl in the RKO picture to the delight of the whole country. In fact, her performance in that picture is one of the very good reasons why RKO bought Kitty Foyle, which Ginger has just finished. With Ginger tonight, you'll hear Edward Arnold in the kind of part that made him famous, a tycoon of industry. John Howard plays his son, and Joan Perry, his daughter. Together, they constitute a family called the Bordens, a family with too much money but enough courage to make up for it. And Ginger is the guardian angel who pulls them back from such disasters as divorce, bankruptcy, and unrequited love. Last week, I mentioned a problem that confronts the studio wardrobe department when a musical picture is being made. But I've discovered that the problem is much greater when the picture is in color. The solution, however, is the same. Lux flakes. In making a picture like Northwest Mounted Police in Technicolor, a costume must be kept the same shade through many hard weeks of production. Of course, so far as washable costumes are concerned, that assignment goes to Lux Flakes. It certainly plays a star role in making a color picture, and it will play a star role for you at home. Experience at the studio makes it easy for me to understand the popularity of our product with the women of America. But right now, it's time for laughter, love, and a light heart as we ring up the curtain on Act One of Fifth Avenue Girl with Ginger Rogers as Mary Gray, Edward Arnold as Timothy Borden, John Howard as Tim, and Joan Perry as Catherine. Certainly the one day a year on which the problems of the overworked captain of industry should be lightened is his birthday. So believes Mr. Timothy Borden of the Borden Amalgamated Pump Company. But sadly enough, it's not working out that way for him. A dozen men surround his desk all hurling argument and query, their voices growing hotter and louder, until Mr. Borden's temperature has reached feverish proportions. Right now, he's at the boiling point. Gentlemen, please, please, please! I'm going home. I'm worn out. I've had enough for one day, and this of all days. But wait, T.J., the Stanton contract has to be signed. Not today. They'll turn us down. All right, all right. Business can't be any worse than it is anyhow. Underwood and Company cancel their order. The stockholders want to stop the bond issue. Our tax appeal was rejected, and now Stanton. I've had enough, Captain. Now, wait, D.J. Hershey and Company called. Well, what about it? The Hershey count is foolproof. My son's attending to that. I'm sorry, D.J. Huh? What's that? Well, you see, Hershey asked for a revised estimate. Your son wasn't here, so they took their account to Acme. Is my son here now? He hasn't been here all week. He's been out playing polo, the international finals or something. Don't tell me any more. Yes, Mr. Uh, tell Michael to bring the car around, Miss Watson. Yes, sir. No, 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 gentlemen, gentlemen, that's all for today. My nerves are as frayed as a weather-beaten rope. That's all. I'm going home. Well, Michael, there seems to be a touch of spring in the air. Yes, sir. Spring is something that even the poor people can enjoy. Huh? Spring, sir. It's free. Oh, oh, I see. Well, I won't need you tonight, Michael. Yes, sir. Oh, good evening, Higgins. Good evening. You're home early, sir. Well, a man should get home early on his birthday, at least. I suppose the family will be here for dinner? No, sir. Nobody? Mrs. Borden is dining out, uh, as usual. Your daughter's going to this becoming out party. 
I haven't heard from Mr. Junior. I see. Aren't you feeling well, sir? Oh, yes, I'm all right, I'm all right. Perhaps the touch of spring fever, sir. Yeah, perhaps. I felt it myself this afternoon just walking in the park. By the way, sir, here's a special delivery letter for you. Well, thank you, Agnes. It was lovely there today. Well? The park, sir. The park? Oh, oh, yeah. Whenever I'm free, I like to go there. Some people like to look at the animals, but personally, I like trees and flowers. Uh, Higgins. Yes, sir? Uh, Higgins, do you read the gossip columns? Always, sir. Then I suppose you've read this item. What Fifth Avenue matron is dancing her way to Reno with what well-known playboy while her husband ponders the problems of pumps? Well, Higgins? Yes, sir. I saw it, sir. Higgins, is there anything wrong with me? Oh, no, sir. Not that I know of, sir. You don't suppose my family's frightened of me? Oh, no, sir. Then why am I treated the way I am? Why does my wife... Well, why does she? What's wrong with my daughter and my son? Why can't they stay at home? Why do people work as hard as they do and for what? I've often wondered myself. After all, what do they get out of life? That's right. What do they get out of life? Sit down, Higgins. Oh, but I'd be very uncomfortable. I'll sit down anyway. You make me uncomfortable. So you're happy just looking at trees and flowers, huh? Oh, no, not entirely, sir. I find my work here very pleasant. Why? Well, to be frank, sir, we servants enjoy the luxuries of the rich and have none of the responsibility. None of the responsibility? Oh, I see, I see. I'd like to get up, sir. May I arrange for your dinner? Uh, just a minute, Higgins. What was the name of the tree you were talking about over in the park? A maple, sir. A maple. Thank you, Higgins. Peanuts. Uh, hot to roast the peanuts. Yes, say, uh, say Pino you do, uh, do the pigeons eat peanuts? Sure, sir. How many? Two. Uh, okay. Twenty cents. They say, wait a minute. Uh, could you tell me if that's a maple tree over there? How should I know? I sell peanuts. Peanuts, peanuts, half a lot of peanuts. Oh, excuse me, miss. Uh, do you mind if I sit here? Why not? It's a public bench. Oh, thanks. Uh, these pigeons are friendly little creatures, aren't they? No, oh, they're just hungry. <laughs> See, they are hungry. Look. Yeah. Y you know, when I was a kid, I used to have a whole flock of them. Yeah. And they used to fly around all over. <laughs> I hope you don't think I'm trying to strike up an acquaintance. Hey, what are you, a flatfoot? You mean a detective? No. Well, if you are, I haven't done anything. Do I look like one? You might be. Did you ever hear of Borden's Amalgamated Pump Company? What kind of pump? Amalgamated pump. Vegetable or mineral? Business. Oh. And a very worrying one. It's a very distressing subject. I don't know why I brought it up. Well, why talk about it then? Well, I don't think I will. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I am trying to strike up an acquaintance with you. You see, I'm lonely. It's my birthday. Mm. Well, birthdays are all right, but you never get over the first one. <laughs> You've got a knife. I'll split this apple with you. Yeah, who thank you very much, no. Very good. Well, aren't you afraid you'll spoil your dinner? This is my dinner. Are you on a diet? Yes, but against my wishes. Huh. Well, haven't you got a job? <laughs> who has? Well, it doesn't seem to bother you very much. Doesn't. I'm alive and kicking. Got five dollars in my pocketbook. My room rent's paid for another week. And then what? Oh, I don't know. Something will turn up. It always does. But you mean you sleep in the park? <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? And that wouldn't worry you? Say, you sound like one of those Fifth Avenue cadavers. Fifth Avenue what? Oh, those people that live over there, those millionaires. They're always squawking. You'd think the country was going to the dogs. Well, they have their troubles. What troubles? I used to stand over in the plaza and watch them come home at night. They look like a lot of wax dummies who've had an overdose of dill pickles. See, they make me tired. Well, I don't like them either when you come right down to it. Uh, look, I just had an idea. This is my birthday. Well, it's not mine. Uh, would it be presumptuous if I asked you to help me celebrate it? And do what? Oh, we could go someplace and eat. Where? Well, there's a place they call the Flamingo Club. Look. Mister, are you feeling all right? Oh, people must have a wonderful time there because it costs so much money. Is your uh, keeper around, Hanker? No, no, I mean it. I'd love to go there. Well, so would I, but I'd rather go to the automat and keep the change. But this is my birthday. We could have lots of fun insulting the rich. You're sure you wouldn't run out on me and leave me holding the check? No, no, I've got lots of money. Look, here, you can hold it. <laughs> well, gee, hadn't you better get somebody to hold me? No, no, you'll be all right. Well, thanks. Well, that's swell. Let's eat. Gee, if I eat any real food, I'll probably die. But might as well die of food poisoning as anything else. Come on. What 
you have for some refreshments and champagne? How much will it cost? Oh, never mind that. Waiter, waiter. Oui, monsieur. Some champagne. Oui, monsieur. Champagne. Look, it's your money, but do you print it yourself? <laughs> We're celebrating. It's my birthday. You're telling me. Wait up. Oui, More champagne. You'd bring a, better bring enough for everybody. Oui, monsieur. Enough for everybody. Yeah. I wish you knew what this was doing to my scotch blood. We ought to be able to take a table and a couple of chairs home with us and throw in some silverware. Ah, but it is good. Will you have some more? <laughs> Why not? Every sip is like drinking six pairs of silk stockings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you can't drink silk stockings. <laughs> Say, is this your birthday or has Christmas sneaked up on me, too? Well, it's my birthday and we're going to have a good time. Come on, let's dance. <laughs> yeah, let's. Whoa, whoa. Who are you wait waving? A minute, wait a minute. Uh, you... Just a friend of mine. Her uh, name is Mrs. Borden. Your wife? Uh, yes, that's what I'm told. Uh, I was afraid of something like this. Is that your son with her, too? If I had a son like that, I'd disown him. Come on over and say hello, huh? Oh, hello, Martha. Timothy, what are you doing here? I'm celebrating my birthday, and what are you doing here? Oh, please sit down. You're making yourself conspicuous. I'll only be a minute. I just want to meet the gentleman. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Hopkins, my husband. How do you do? How do you do? And this is uh, Miss... Uh, Gray. Miss, uh, Gray, Miss Gray. How do you do? Uh, say, you know, I've been reading about you in the papers, Mr. Hopkins. The, the gossip columns, congratulations. I think you show very good taste. Well, that's more than I can say for you. Tommy, let's go. Yes, I think we'd better. Oh. Now, there's a fellow I wanted to insult. Well, why didn't you? Well, I couldn't think of anything to say. Well, let's sit down. I'll dream up something for you. That's a good idea, too. <laughs> but the way I'm feeling right now, I'm beginning to like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 good morning, my dear. Uh, will you have some breakfast with me? I've had it. Are you in a mood this morning to discuss a few matters of importance to both of us? Well, I... Uh, well, there are several things that need my attention, and uh, mm, I... I can well imagine. That black eye of yours is one of them. Yes, I noticed it. I had a bit of an accident. Yes. The papers give a full account of it. Who is this woman? Woman? What woman? Who is she? Oh, she, she, oh, she's a very nice girl, she is, a very nice girl. Where did you meet her? I met her in the park. I never saw her before in my life, and I'll probably never see her again. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad you're here. I was afraid I'd overslept. Well, uh, this, uh, this is uh, my wife, Miss Gray. I believe we've met. What's wrong with her? Say, where did you come from? Upstairs, don't you remember? In a way I do, yes, and in a way I don't. Hey, Mrs. Borden seems upset, I... I'd better be on my way. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't leave me now. Well, I can't think of a better time. No, no, i got to find out how you got here and also how I did. Well, it's a little vague to me. Oh, well, maybe Higgins can help us. Oh, Higgins. Breakfast is served, sir. Uh, Higgins, were you awake when Miss Gray and I came in last night? Oh, look, <laughs> he's got one, too. What? A black eye. Say, that's a pip, Higgins. Thank you, Miss. <laughs> oh, that's a shame, Higgins. What happened? Well, it was this way, sir. When you came in last night, you... Oh, it happened last night. Never mind, Higgins. You better get us some breakfast. Yes, sir. Look, I've had a beautiful evening. I've been out in society, and I've got a wonderful headache, and I couldn't be happier, but really, I've got to be running along. Oh, no, no, no. You must have some breakfast. Besides, I need your advice. Oh, if I don't have another birthday for ten years, it'll be soon enough. Well, why? We had a wonderful time. We must have. I spent a dollar of my own money. You shouldn't have done that. That's what started the argument with the taxi driver. Taxi driver? Yeah. Coffee, sir. You remember the taxi driver, don't you, Higgins? I shall never forget him. Well, if I'm not too inquisitive, just what is all this about a taxi driver? He was much less belligerent than the policeman, sir. What policeman? The one who calmed you down after you told him you'd defend Miss America with your life, sir. Defend who? Miss America, sir. You were quieter after you fell down the steps. But your last request was that we put Miss America in the guest room. Miss America? Did anybody else come home with us? No, I'm Miss America. Oh. I want you to know, sir, that I hold not one moment's anger toward anyone for smashing me in the eye. It was nice to see you gay for a change. Thank you, Higgins. Not at all, sir. Well, all that was last night. And today's a new day. Right. You know something happened to this house this morning that hasn't happened in a long time? This is the first time in years my wife's paid any attention to me. And I think you had something to do with it. 
I think I did. You said something had turned up. Well, here it is. Why not take a job with me? What kind of a job? Well, we'll think of something. Uh, I'd just like to keep you around here. No, thank you. I'd, I'd feel much safer. You see, yesterday I learned I was about to lose my wife. And you want me to stay here and make sure? Well, it might work just the other way around. And again, it mightn't. You, you know, Martha, uh, that's my wife, is a very nice person. Though you would scarcely believe it by the way she acted toward you this morning. Oh, well, she just had me figured wrong. Well, that's, that's what's so nice about it. Now, you need a job and I need you. No, thank you. You're too rich. Besides, it'd scare me, living in a house this big. But I didn't want all this. Is it my fault that I invented a pump? All I ever wanted in my life was to have a little fun and a family. I haven't got a family and never had any fun for last night. Well, thanks, but I'll see you next birthday. Now, wait a minute, Miss Gray. Come here. Just a... Hey, who's the mob? Oh, my daughter Catherine and her gang, I suppose. She's probably brought them all home for breakfast. Oh, well, do they do this often? I mean, does this go on all the time? Let's go out in the garden. I have an offer to make you, a business offer. Come on in, gang. Come on in. <laughs> hey, Catherine, who's that? That? Oh, it's Dad and somebody. Don't let him bother you. Make yourselves at home, gang. Okay. I'll get Cook to whip us up some all breakfast. All right, happy, will you? <laughs> Cook. Oh, hello, Michael. Hello. Cook, how about some breakfast? How many? Oh, I don't know, 10 or 12. Will you hurry it up? Of all things, 10, 12. I ain't running a restaurant. Michael, would you mind helping Cook? She's got a grouch on again. I'm the chauffeur of the house. Besides, this is my breakfast hour. I'm supposed to be eating. Well, sit down then and eat. I'm just a mechanical puppet. I'm not supposed to sit in the presence of my... I know. You're not supposed to sit in the presence of your betters, as you say. But go ahead. I didn't say that. You were thinking it. Oh, I'm not supposed to think. I'm only supposed to wait outside a hotel all night while my betters are getting drunk and throwing away more money than most people make in a year. I'm sorry, Mike. You'll feel better after you get some sleep. I'm not supposed to sleep. Just wind me up like a mechanical toy. I didn't mean to be rude, Michael. The rich can afford to be rude. You and your brother and all your rich friends. What's wrong with Tim and me? Tell me, Michael. Listen, will you get out of here and let me finish my breakfast? Oh, Michael, you're wonderful. I love you when you get mad. Look, if I hurry and get the gang out of here, will you talk to me? No. Oh, thanks, Michael. See you later. Hello, Mom. What's up? Higgins said you wanted to see me. Read this, second column. It's about your father. Oh, that, I saw it. Yeah, it must have been some shindig. Was Dad banged up much? Just a common black eye. <laughs> it's not funny, Tim. And you haven't heard the worst. Who's the blonde woman they mentioned? I'm coming to that. She spent the night here. You're kidding. She spent the night here in the guest room. Now I want you to go right downstairs and get her out of this house. Well, I'll do the best I can. I'm not so sure about Dad now. He might poke me in the eye. Oh, good morning. Good morning. I'm Mr. Borden's son. Yes, your father's just told me about you. Well, let's come to the point. How long have you known my father? Oh, a long time. Ever since last night. You only met him last night? In the park. Oh, a pickup. Nothing is vulgar as that. Well, what would you call it? Love at first sight, I guess. Don't make me laugh. My father's an old man. Age doesn't matter when the real thing comes along. How about money? Does that matter? It helps. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Look, you see this? You know what it is? Um, the... $50 bill, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. Here, hold it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, it's a real thing. I can see the little veins running through it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bet you that $50 you can't get out that door by the time I count 10. Oh, that's pretty far. Well, I could count to 20. No, I don't think I could make it. You see, my rheumatism's been bothering me. <laughs> Here's your money. I understand you play polo. What's that got to do with it? Nothing. Just that I'm amazed. Amazed at what? Amazed to discover that horses have better breeding than the people who ride them. Well, have you decided about... Oh, hello, Tim. Hello, Dad. Uh, have you uh, thought the matter over, Miss Gray? Oh, yes. Uh, I've had a couple of propositions this morning. Your son wants me to leave, and you want me to stay. And of the two propositions, Mr. Borden Sr., I think I prefer yours. <laughs> In 
just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring us Act Two of Fifth Avenue Girl with Ginger Rogers, Edward Arnold, John Howard, and Joan Perry. Meantime, you all remember the old saying, give me the making of the songs of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws. Well, nearly every region in America has its own beloved songs. You know this old-time one. That's O oh Susanna, one of Stephen Foster's most engaging songs. Remember how it starts? I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Yes, and speaking of Louisiana, here's a bit of recent news from the South. Down in New Orleans, and in many other cities too, we made a survey to find out how the women wash their nice things. And when all the results from all the cities were added up, we found... Twice as many women use new quick lux flakes for stockings, underthings, sweaters, and other nice things as use any other flakes, chips, or beads. Yes, Sally. It's new quick lux two to one. All over the country, east, west, north, south, from Boston to San Francisco, American women choose new quick lux two to one. Well, no wonder, Mr. Ruick. It's so much faster. It's so thrifty. It's so safe. Three good reasons for popularity, aren't they? First, speed. In water as cool as your hand, New Quick Lux dissolves three times as fast as any of ten other leading soaps tested. Second, thrift. New Quick Lux goes further, gives more suds ounce for ounce than any of these soaps, even in hard water. Third, safety. New Quick Lux flakes are safe for anything safe in water. Mr. Ruick. I've written a verse about New Quick Luck. Well, that's interesting, Sally. How does it go? Well, it's a new version of O Susanna. And here's our friend to sing it. Listen. From Maine to Alabama, in states near and far away, New York to California, New Quick Luck sweeps USA. Yes, New Quick Lux flakes are America's favorite way of washing nice things. Why not get the generous big box tomorrow? It comes in the same familiar package, costs you no more. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Fifth Avenue Girl, starring Ginger Rogers as Mary Gray, Edward Arnold as Timothy Borden, John Howard as Tim, and Joan Perry as Catherine. The arrival of Mary Gray in the Borden household created a storm of dissension, but all efforts to dislodge her have proved futile. Her pretended romance with Mr. Borden has stunned the family completely, and for the first time in years, the master of the house assumes a certain importance in their eyes. But Timothy Jr. feels he's been personally affronted. In the library, he faces the unwelcome guest. Say, you. You referring to me? Yes. Did you put this picture of father on my dresser? What's wrong with your father? That's beside the point. Did you put these business reports there, too? Well, I didn't know what to do with them since your father's too old to work. That's a lot of bunk. He wasn't too old a couple of weeks ago. Oh, he seems to think so now. Well, what am I supposed to do with these reports? Well, somebody's got to fill your father's shoes. I guess, though, they're probably too big for you. Oh, I'm not a man, is that it? Well, you wear long pants. Say, what are you trying to do, disrupt this family? I haven't done anything. What's your racket, sister? Haven't quite made up my mind. Do you think my mother's going to step aside for you? That's what I heard. So you think you're going to marry my father, is that it? I might be your stepmother. Heaven knows I'd hate to be your mother. I've got you figured. You're a gold digger. What makes you think you're not a gold digger? What have you ever done to deserve all this? What have you ever accomplished? What do you expect to accomplish? I've got my claws in plush, and I like the feel of it. No, you're just kidding yourself. With father's business going to pot, there isn't going to be any plush left. Oh, there'll be enough for my needs. When I get through, you're going to be faced with the awful predicament of going to work for a change. Oh, there you are, Mary. Shall we go? I'm all ready. Yes, I'm ready. Dad, listen. Oh, hello, son. How's the polo coming along? Dad, can I speak to you privately? Well, you might ask Miss Gray for an appointment. Miss Gray, do you mind if I speak to my father? Uh, no. Well, please go away, then. Not any farther than this. So are you two fastened together with wires or something? Look, Dad, I, I don't know what's come over you. You know Mother's in a pretty nervous condition. No, oh, I didn't know. That's too bad. I can't criticize you for neglecting Mother, but I do criticize you for neglecting your business. What business? The pump business. 
Have you seen these reports? I told him it's great to throw them out. But, Dad, the business is in a very desperate condition. Is that so? Well, why don't you do something about it? Dad, I don't know anything about pumps. You can learn, can't you? Come on, Mr. Borden. We're going to be late for our little rumble lesson. <laughs> Now, children, we've got to be calm. The important thing is that we must change our attitude toward this woman. Yeah. If we're pleasant to her, she'll reveal her true colors. They always do. Then your father will get rid of her himself. Why are you so anxious about father? I thought you were going to Reno. Well, Reno will come in time. Mother's boyfriend gave her the air. Catherine, nothing of the kind. Mr. Hopkins is simply being discreet in this emergency. Besides, we can't let your father make a fool of himself. After we've saved him from himself, we can all live our own lives. We might as well save some of his money for ourselves while we're at it. And just what are you doing for the cause? Hanging around the kitchen, mooing after that dope Michael. Michael? What, Tim, Catherine? Tim, you shut up. He doesn't know what he's talking now, about. Now, children, children, bickering is not the answer to our problem. We've all got to pull together. Now, Tim... I want you to be especially nice to Miss Gray. Well, what am I supposed to do, enter in a competition with Dad? You can't take a girl away from your own father. Well, the least you can do is to make the same sacrifices I'm making. I've had enough of sacrifices. I've been going to that office every day for a week. Pumps, pumps, pumps. That's all I hear all day long. You make some sacrifices for a change. I'm not going to spend my evenings with a female I loathe. But we've got to do something. And we can only succeed by unified action. Oh, I'm asking my family to rally round for the last time. Hold it, Mother, hold it. You look like the Statue of Liberty. Now, Higgins, Mr. Borden will sit here, and I'd like Miss Gray to sit next to Mr. Timothy. Miss Catherine will sit next to me. Yes, madame. Now... Has Cook prepared all of Mr. Borden's favorite dishes? Everything, madame, including the beef stew. Oh, thank you, Higgins. Good evening. Oh, good evening, Miss Gray. Well, how charming you look. Children, come and see how lovely Miss Gray looks in her new frock. Won't you join us in the living room? Well, uh, Mr. Borden and I are going out. Oh. Oh, Tim, doesn't Miss Gray look charming? She certainly does. Is that a new gown? Oh, yes, it is. It's very chic. Where did you get it? Where? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that is, I don't remember. Catherine, you shouldn't be so inquisitive. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, we haven't got to know you better. After all, you are practically one of the family. As a matter of fact, we've all been a little upset. You yeah, that's right. We haven't meant to be rude. Personally, I'd like to offer you my apologies. Oh, you haven't been that rude. Uh, Mary, Mary, where are you? In here. Lessons from Madame Lasanga. You do the rumba, the Lula Conga. Six lessons and oh, hello, hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late. I was just practicing that new rumba step. You oh, know? Timothy, I was just saying that I thought it would be a good idea if you and Miss Gray joined us for dinner. Yes, what do you say, Dad? Uh, for dinner? Well, I, I'm not quite sure. We have all your favorite dishes. You have? Well, why didn't you let me know about it? Well, it's sort of a surprise. Well, what do you think about it, Miss Gray? We uh, have a party of friends waiting for us. Oh, yes, that's true. And it wouldn't be nice to keep them waiting. Oh, I shouldn't think so. No, well, I'm, I'm sorry, but we could make it some other night. Just as you say, Timothy. Well, we'd better be getting along. We're a little late now, and I wouldn't want to keep them waiting. Uh, my arm, dear. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm just trying out that new rumper step again, see? Six lessons from Madame Lazanga. You'll do the rumper and the conga six, you know? Oh, say, wait a minute, I got it. Six lessons. Well, can you beat it? Five million bucks walking right out of our lives, and there's nothing we can do about it. Hey, how, how did you like that rumper I showed the family then? <laughs> I think you got something there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a shame to go on deceiving them like this. Don't weaken now. It'll do them good. Well, you're the boss. Oh, Michael... Michael, just drive through the park as usual. We'll let you know when we want to go home. Phew. Do people get in these clothes every night? And why they ever put tails on a man's coat, I don't know. No, don't ask me. And why they keep guzzling champagne night after night, I'll never know. I can still feel the effects of your birthday party every time I shake my head. You see, the family was being very nice to you when I came down. Oh, they had me scared to death. Yeah, they, they're even nice to me, they'd live. 
Pretty simple. You take something away from people they don't want, and they want it more than ever. You know, you've got a lot of common sense. <laughs> you've got to have common sense on my side of the fence. Mm, there are a lot of nice people on your side of the fence. Well, the other fellow's pasture always looks greener. Does my side of the fence look any different to you? You can have it. I'm beginning to feel sorry for the rich, huh? I guess rich people are just poor people with money. <laughs> oh, this vicious nightlife is getting me down. I'm not very good at faking. When I do things, I want to mean them. But don't you think I'd better be on my way? Why? I'd better get back to where I belong before this kind of life catches up with me. Oh, you can't walk out on a contract. Oh, it's the goofiest job I've ever had. I don't see what good I'm doing in that house outside of getting myself into a mess. Well, whatever you're doing, it seems to work. I've never enjoyed so much attention before from my family. Why do you hang on to a bunch like that, anyhow? Oh, well, I like them. You really do like them? Yeah, they're a pretty nice family. Because hmm. I remember them. Everybody do his own poison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're still in love with your wife, aren't you? Well, no. You see, after love goes away, something's left in its place that's even, even more important. Uh, it's okay with you. It's okay with me. I'm getting paid. Yeah, that's the girl. But you know, we've got to begin thinking about your future. Oh, don't worry about my future. It doesn't bother me. I haven't any squat coming. Oh, this night life. Uh, well. Mm -hmm. oh, we can go home in a couple of hours. Better be quiet. Somebody may still be up. Well, if they are, go into the act. All right. Oh, look out. Here comes your wife. Oh, 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 oh. oh good evening. Did you have a nice Happy time? Happy birthday to you. Timothy! Happy Boy, I'll say, we've had an evening. You should have seen him at the Flamingo Club. He was a scream. He kept insisting it was his birthday all over again. Well, then, wait a minute. One step at a time. Oh, no, I don't know what I've done to deserve this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Is she gone? Yeah. Say... You're a great actor, you know that. Well, you better get some sleep. Good night and pleasant dreams. Good night. Who is it? Me, Catherine. Well, come in. I've waited up for you. I wanted to talk to you. Oh, well, what's the trouble? I've got a problem. Who hasn't? It's about Michael. Oh, what about Michael? He doesn't respond. He doesn't what? Well, you see, Miss Gray, I'm rich and I know it. But it isn't my fault. I try to understand everything he says to me, even though sometimes I don't know what he's talking about. What are you talking about? You see, I'm broad-minded. I understand perfectly about you and Father. Aren't you getting a little ahead of yourself? Why shouldn't younger people marry older people? Fat people marry thin people. Tall people marry short I'm people. I'm afraid you don't quite understand the situation. I'm not a child. You're young father's own. All right, Michael's poor and I'm rich, and I love him very much. But I can't go on waiting for the day. What day? You know, when we'll all be the same. Michael calls it dialectical materialism. Well, what does that mean? I'm not sure, but I think it's when everybody will be more or less like Michael. Look, I'm a little tired, and I think you're a little tired, too. But what am I going to do about it? I know you know. You're a woman of the world. I think you'd better talk about this to your mother. M mother doesn't understand those things. Oh, she's not alone. Perhaps if I got a job, it would make a difference. Yes, might be a good idea. That's what I'll do. Then if I'm like him, he can't ignore me, can he? Oh, you're wonderful. Huh? Why? For giving me this swell advice. Well, now, look here. I didn't say anything. I, I don't want to say anything. I'm in enough hot water as this. Well, to look at the boy's really coming along, eh? Yes, he's really taken hold down there at the office. Well, he's my son. He's got ideas, T.J. He's figured out a method of marketing a cheaper pump on long-term credit. Ought to make you a mint of money. 
Oh, am I butting in? No, no. Mr. Terwilliger and I were just talking over a few personal matters. Thanks very much for dropping in like this, Terwilliger. Good night. Good night, TJ. <laughs> Good night, Tim. Good night. The Tim, what's all this about long-term credit and cheaper pumps? Well, your pumps have got whiskers, and so have your ideas. If I'm going to run this business, I'm going to run it my way. All right. Do as you like. Look, this is really what I wanted to talk to you about, Dad. I'm worried about Mother. She's taking an awful beating. But, but I haven't done anything. Well, it isn't easy for Mother to live in the same house with another woman hanging around. What, uh, what other woman? Oh, 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 we don't know what it's all about. Are you going to marry this girl? Now, or... I don't inquire into your personal affairs, and I don't see why you should inquire into mine. Well, why don't you at least give Mother a break? Why don't you talk to her? I didn't know she wanted to talk to me. Well, she does. I just left her. She's upstairs. Look, why don't we clear out of here tonight and leave you two alone? Maybe you can straighten out a few things. It's almost 8.30. Are you ready? Oh, oh, oh well, hello, Mary. Uh, just a second now. I'll, I'll run up and get my coat. Dad? Yeah? I'd be very happy to take Miss Gray any place she wanted to go tonight. Well, why not? What do you say, Mary? Oh, uh, well, thanks. I'd uh, just as soon spend one evening at home. Oh, wait a minute. Is there anything wrong with me? Have I got Barry Barry or something? Mary, I don't like to ask you to do this, but uh, would you mind going to the opening with Tim? Well, I don't know. I wasn't oh, very... Mary. You see, uh, Mrs. Borden and I have a few things to talk over. Oh. Oh, I... Well, in that case, I'd love to go. That is, if he doesn't mind taking me. Mine? Why, it'd be a pleasure. Is the car outside? Yes. Well, come on, then. What's holding us back? By the way, where is this opening? Oh, I don't know. Oh, that is... Uh, I don't really feel like going anyplace. As a matter of fact, we were just going for a walk through the park. Look, you don't have to come along if you don't want to. Do you put on evening clothes to take a walk in the park? I do it quite often. Oh, I see. That's why you ordered Michael to have the car, too. No. We were going to the band concert. In evening clothes? But I'm not submitting to a third degree unless you show me a badge. Well, I'm not going to let you walk in the park alone. I do it quite often, but you needn't come along if you're afraid of the dark. Come on, come on. Never mind the sarcasm. Peanuts, uh, hot to roast the peanuts. Uh, oh, some uh, peanuts, please. Okay, lady. Thanks. Peanuts, uh, hot to roast the peanuts. Here. Want some peanuts? Thanks. Will this be dinner? Sure. Everything's on me tonight. Well, where do we go from here? Over on that bench. That bench? Yes. How do you think we're going to find any room on that bench? Mm -hmm. We will. Come on, squeeze in. Uh, pardon us, please. The nerve of some people's children. Well, <laughs> we made it. Sure. Now, eat your peanuts. Uh, don't look now, but love is certainly in the air around here. Well, the park bench is the only place poor people can make love. Say, lady, do you mind moving over? Me and me gals got a little neck and tattoo. Well, there's, only... <laughs> there's only room for one. I mean, that's all we need. Come on, honey, set. <laughs> Look, is this the only bench in the park? I'm beginning to feel like a sardine still in the can. I met your father on this bench. Well, that ought to make it a museum piece. Say, is this what you and Dad do every night? Not every night. Well, you might at least have picked the bench away from that seal pond. Well, if there's anything you want to know about seals, I can tell you. They eat nothing but fresh oysters on the half shell every it's day. It's too bad they don't like fresh blondes. Uh -huh. I've been thrown to them before, but they always toss me back. Well, they've got more intelligence than I thought. Hey, why don't you two fight at home? Can't even have a pleasant evening in the park without someone coming along to spoil it. Let's go, Milton. Now, you see? <laughs> you frighten people. Well, I'm going to at least have a little more room. Shove over. Oh, pardon me, bud. How about us sitting there? Come on, baby. Okay, Commodore. Well, that's that. Now the Marines have moved in. Why don't you go home? I can sit here as Anchors long as you can. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey look, sailor. Away. Would you mind piping down? We'd like to listen to the band concert. What's the matter with my singing? Just pipe down. Oh, now you frighten me, bud. What are you, a junior G man? Well, if you think I am, just step out on a walk. Well, when you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Hey, Come wait on. wait a minute, sailor. Sister, why don't you give your friend a liver pill? Hey, why don't you button up your lip? Would you two ladies like to fight it out? Come on, Lexan, let's scram out of here. So long, Junior G-Man. Go on, beat it. Did you come here to fight? Look, I don't want to fight. I just want to talk. If you don't mind, I'd rather listen to the music. Oh, something you, something you, please. Would you kindly move over, please? 
Here we go again. Move over. Oh, thank you. Here is seat. Sitting down, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, night, isn't it? The moon's just coming up. Yeah. You know, you're very pretty by moonlight, Miss Gray. Uh, Mary. Hey. Wait a minute. What makes you think you can get away with that stuff? What, the kiss? Yeah. Why did you do that? Well, because it's something I wanted to do. Oh, you give me an idea, Mr. Borden. That's something I've wanted to do. Kathy, I want to see you. Look, would you mind some other time? No, right now. I just want to tell you what I think of you. You're the most deceitful, double-crossing, sneaky. Wait a minute. Wait, what have I done? You what know very happened? well. Michael. My, well, what about him? <laughs> I told him I was going to get a job, just as you said. I said? <laughs> and, and now he hates me. He says I'm just a spoiled brat trying to take somebody's job away. Oh, he man. hates me. You could have stopped it. Oh. I confided in you. I trusted you. Oh, well, we'll do something about it. We'll You've be... done enough. You don't care anything about Dad. You only go out with him so you can be near Michael. Oh, for heaven's sake. But you're not going to get him. If I can't have him, nobody can. I hate you. Oh, I hate you. Mama hates me. Daughter hates me. Junior hates me. I guess I'm a pretty popular girl around here. After a short intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Ginger Rogers, Edward Arnold, John Howard, and Joan Perry in Act Three of Fifth Avenue Girl. Tonight, we've asked Libby Collins, our Hollywood fashion reporter, to round up some last-minute fashion news for us, just in time for last-minute Christmas shopping. Here she is, Libby Collins. Well, Mr. Ruick, it looks like a white Christmas. You mean we're going to have snow for Christmas, Libby, here in Hollywood? <laughs> no, indeed. That's not a weather report, it's a fashion report. This year, white has climbed right into the fashion spotlight in the middle of winter. Joan Bennett modeled a gorgeous evening cape for one of the fashion magazines. It's made of chalky white gabardine with swirls of gold kit on the shoulders. Marlena Dietrich, in her current hit, Seven Sinners, wears a beautiful white afternoon suit. Smart shops are featuring white coats, even for city streets. And white evening dresses will be as thick as snowflakes at holiday parties. Well, I guess this year, Libby, if it's white, it's right. That's about it, Mr. Ruick. And there's one place where white is specially right. That's in winter sports clothes. Short white woolen skating dresses, luscious white sweaters, and adorable white fuzzy hoods and mittens. Now, wait a minute, Libby. Oh, I know what you're thinking, Mr. Rick. White is lovely, but it does get dirty. And? And new Quick Lux Flakes is the answer. Yes, all your washable woolens will stay fresh and new-looking longer if you care for them with new Quick Lux. You see, there's no harmful alkali, no cake soap rubbing when you use new Quick Lux. It's safe for any color or fabric that's safe in pure water. That's why leading motion picture studios use Lux Flakes for all their washables. Yes, and that's why women everywhere depend on new Quick Lux. Why twice as many use it for sweaters as use any other flakes, chips, or beads. It's so gentle, and it's so fast, and then so thrifty, a little goes so far. Be on the popular side, the safe side, the thrifty side. Use new Quick Lux Flakes. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on Act Three of Fifth Avenue Girl. (laughs) 
Next morning, and a curtain of gloom hangs over the Borden household. Mrs. Borden, Tim, and Catherine are submerged in black thoughts. Even Mary is having a time trying to straighten out Catherine's tangled romance with Michael. Good morning, Cook. Good morning, Mr. Tree. Mind if I join you for a cup of coffee, Michael? Aren't you stepping out of your class? Me? I haven't any class. Look, just what is your position in this household? Don't ask me. Michael, will you stop being a dope? Had a girl. Keep your coffee. What do you mean? Straight from the shoulder. You're in love and you have the spunk to fight for the thing you want. I don't have to listen to this nonsense. You've made Catherine unhappy. You make everyone unhappy. Oh, so you know all about me. You are like a pane of glass to me, brother. You try to make everybody believe things you don't even believe yourself. You're a pawn in the hands of your betters. I'm a what? You're a renegade to your own class. Is that so? You can't call me that and get away with it. How dare you slap Michael? I saw you. I'll pull every hair out of your head. You'll do what, you bat wing flapper? Put down that knife. Put it down. Stop waving that knife. What are you going to do? You talk too much. I'm going to carve you out a new mouth. I don't care what you do to me, but you leave Catherine alone. Who says? I do. You're going to fight for her, huh? Yes, I'll fight for her. Michael. Oh, Michael. That ought to prove how much he hates you. Thanks for your use of the knife, Cook. Good morning, all. Where have you been all day? Oh, just taking care of some odds and ends. I slept most of the day, getting in trim to go out tonight. <laughs> Do we have to? Why don't you stay home for a change? Oh, I'd love to, but we started this thing and we've got to go through with it. Don't you think we've gone too far? You don't know my wife like I do. Well, I'm... Uh, yes, I do. She's completely cured. Has she been talking to you? Oh, just to say hello. Well, you've got to be careful. She's a very persuasive woman, especially when she cries. Listen, if I stay in this house any longer, you're not going to have any family, and I'm not going to have any sanity. Oh, you're not going to run out on me. I've been thinking of it. No, no, you can't. Not yet. I'll put you out when the time comes. But if she thinks she has anything to do with your leaving, I'll be right back where I started. Well, whatever you say, but I've got a feeling that... Mary, leave things... it to me. Will you leave it to me? When the right time comes, I'll put on a big scene. You mean, get out and never darken my door again. That's it. What do you say? <laughs> I'll think it over. Oh, Higgins. Yes, miss. You want me to order the car? No, uh, Higgins, I'm leaving. Will you tell Mr. Borden in about a half an hour, please? You mean you're leaving for good, miss? Yes. Now, don't forget to tell him. Very good, miss. Hello there. Oh, hello. Where are you going, on the prowl again tonight? Maybe. Any special victim in mind? I don't play favorites. What's the matter? You're not dressed up. No band concert? Good night. Oh, no, don't run away. Let's sit down. Listen, I haven't got time to go... Come on. I haven't sat on the front stoop since I was a kid. Anyway, there's a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. You don't mind, do you? Well, that depends. Well, to begin with, what is your angle? What are you doing in this house? You know the answer to that. I'm gold digging. Look, let's quit stalling. I'll admit you've had us all pretty upset, but that's okay. It's probably done us good. But I'm getting tired of this mystery stuff. There's no mystery about me. You know, you're really a pretty nice girl. That's what you think. Well, aren't you? What do you care? You've got my father all mixed up, and now you've got me all mixed Look, up. Why pick on me? I haven't done anything to anybody. Not much, you haven't. What have I ever done to you? Do you really want to know? No. Look, why don't you go away? Oh, no. I'm going to sit right here, and you're going to sit right here until you open up. All right. But you're going to be sitting here for an awfully long time. Mary. Keep your distance. Remember what happened to you in the park? Yeah, I'm thinking about that. And it was worth it. Listen, you, let me go. Why don't you be honest, Mary? You know that I... Let me go! What's the matter? Afraid? I'm not afraid of you. Afraid of yourself? Listen, you keep on your own side of the steps or I'll bat you down. Hey, what's the matter up there? Anything wrong here, lady? Uh, no, officer. Everything's all right. Was this fella annoying you? I told you everything was all right, officer. Well, watch your step, buddy. Well, now are you satisfied? Well, I... Thanks for saving you from the law. 
But I came here to talk, and cop or no cop, Miss Gray, that's what we're going to do. It's true, Timothy. I heard her tell Higgins. I don't believe it. She wouldn't do a thing like that. Timothy, do you mind so very much? Of course I mind. I'm going out and look for her. Oh, Timothy, I... Huh? I thought perhaps we could stay home tonight together. I... I made some stew, Timothy. Stew? You made stew? Yes. Well, all right, I'll look for her later. Oh, Timothy, thank you. Oh, it'll be like old times, won't it? Just you and me alone. Uh huh. Timothy, I was thinking, uh, couldn't we start all over again? Start all over again? After the way I acted? I wouldn't think of asking you, Martha. Well, you haven't acted any worse than I have. The whole thing's been my fault. No, 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 it was my fault. Those innocent flirtations of yours meant nothing. Of course not, but there'll never be another. Timothy, do you know what I've been doing in my spare time? I've been learning to rumba. What for? So that I could go out dancing with you, if you'll let me. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Oh, Timothy, and you won't go looking for Miss Gray? Ah, uh, we'll see about that, too. Oh, Timothy. Come on in, Michael. Hello, Mother. Hello, Dad. Catherine, what's Michael doing in here? Oh, you didn't have an accident, did you? <laughs> no, Mother. Tell them, Michael. No. You, you tell them. All right. Michael and I are man and wife. Michael and you are what? <laughs> We're married. Oh, stop this nonsense. It isn't nonsense. Oh, but I don't believe it. Married to a chauffeur? He's not a chauffeur. Here, you may have the cap. I relinquish the badge of servitude. Michael, you go to the kitchen. You're not going to separate us. Go to your room, Catherine. You stay where you are. Oh, send him away, Timothy. The girl's out of her mind. I'm afraid you'll have to go away, Michael. I'm taking Catherine with me. Naturally, she's your wife. Oh, Dad. Congratulations, Michael. Oh, Timothy. Now, wait a minute, Martha. Oh, but this is too much. Married to a chauffeur. Well, I wasn't much when you married me. Oh, but she's such a baby. Well, about the same age as you were. Huh? Yeah. Oh, well, all right. Congratulations, darling. I, I hope you'll be very happy. Congratulations, Michael. What's your last name? Parents bother. Oh! So what's going on? Yes, is there anything wrong? Oh, Mary. Mary, you're wonderful. What? Just wonderful. I can't thank you enough. What's Mary done? Tim, Michael and I are married. <laughs> We're going on our honeymoon now. Say goodbye, Michael. Goodbye. <laughs> Dad and Mom... Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, Mary, and thanks again. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs> Great kids, huh? Timothy, hadn't you better tell Miss Gray? Huh? What? Oh, oh, yes, yes, Miss Gray. What have you got to say for yourself? Is it true you advised my daughter to elope with a house chauffeur? I suppose I did. You suppose you did? I want you to know, Miss Gray, this is, this is the end. You've come between me and my family for the last time. Aren't you being a little rough? Rough! Man, after what this woman has done to all of us. Your mother on the verge of a nervous breakdown, your sister. Well, look what she's done to your sister. Uh, you're a wicked, conniving woman, Miss Gray. You've hypnotized me for the last time, and I must ask you to leave this house. Oh, I can't play any longer. I wasn't doing anything to anybody. I was just sitting on a park bench, minding my own business. I didn't ask for this job. No, 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 you no, no, no. forced it on me. I'm sorry I ever saw you. I'm sorry I ever saw this place. I can't take it any longer. I'm going. Hey, wait a minute, Dad. What was that about a job? Huh? Job? Yes, Timothy, what was that? Dad, was she working here? Huh? Working? Was she working here? She was working here. I knew it. Mary! Mary, come back. Listen. Listen. Timothy. Look me in the eye. <laughs> well, um... Timothy Borden, you old fake. Well, gosh, Martha, I had to do something. Well, I'm, I'm glad you did. Oh, Martha. Mary, Mary, wait. L listen, Mary. Let me alone. Come here. Where do you think you're going why should you care where I'm going? Well, I do care. I'm going back to where I belong. I'll say you are. You belong with me. And you're coming back to the house right now. I'm not. You're coming back if I have to carry you. Come on. Go, no. Put me down. You can't do this to me. I'll show you. Let me down. You hear? Let me down. Here, here, here. What's going on here? Out of the way, officer. Put that girl down or I'll run you in. Officer. Yes, lady? Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> Mr. 
In just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring our stars back to the microphone for their curtain call. But first, there's a Christmas hint I'd like to give our listeners. It's about Lux Snow on your Christmas tree. Lovely, real-looking Christmas snow for your tree that you can make from the same pure white Lux flakes that you use for washing all your pretty things. This Lux snow costs so little, yet it makes your tree distinctive and different, just like one that's been out in the woods in a real snowstorm. It's very easy to make, and it lasts right through the holiday season. Now, here's what you do to make this snow out of Lux flakes. Take a large box of Lux flakes and empty it into a big bowl or a dish pan. Then take two cups of lukewarm water, just two cups, and pour them into the bowl with the flakes. Now, with an egg beater, beat this mixture until it gets fluffy, like rich whipped cream. Then take handfuls of this whipped up snow and spread it with your fingers along the branches of your tree. If you want more sparkle, get some of that shiny artificial snow that you buy in a store and sprinkle it right on top of the Lux snow while the Lux snow is still moist. Christmas wreaths will look gayer than ever in your windows if you add a touch of Lux snow to them. For your holiday table decorations, take pine boughs or just bare branches from a tree or shrub and spread on the whipped up snow. Now remember, to make this Christmas snow, use two cups of lukewarm water to each large box of Lux flakes. Then beat with an egg beater till the mixture is fluffy like thick whipped cream. Be sure to buy the large box of Lux flakes. And now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. We're a long way from Fifth Avenue now, but here's our Fifth Avenue girl again, Ginger Rogers, with Edward Arnold and John Howard. You know, C.B., Ginger is a constant source of amazement to me. <laughs> is that good or bad? Eddie? Oh, good, very good. <laughs> well, then you can speak freely, Eddie. Yes, what's amazing about Ginger this week? The discovery I made the other day. Good? Excellent. I was wandering around an art gallery downtown when all of a sudden I found myself in front of a drawing signed by Ginger Rogers. A charcoal sketch of the actress Maria Uspenskaya, and it was great. How do you play, Ginger? Guilty or not guilty? Well, it's a form of insanity, Judge. You know, like you navigate your boat or Eddie gets out in the kitchen and cooks dinner, I draw pictures. <laughs> and a very nice hobby it is, Ginger, especially when they hang your pictures in art galleries. <laughs> What's on the program next week, Mr. DeMille? Next Monday night, the marquee will read Mickey Rooney, Dula Bandy, and Virginia Weidler in Young Tom Edison. Our play is adapted from the MGM picture with Mickey and the same part he played on the screen. It's the drama of a genius, but a genius who was a regular American boy. Tom Edison got into more than his share of scrapes, so Mickey Rooney will be right at home in the part next Monday night when we present Young Tom Edison. That's a swell Christmas present for any audience, Mr. DeMille. We'll be listening. Uh, Ginger, I understand they're previewing your new picture, Kitty Foyle, tonight. Yes, that's right, John. Well, I hear great reports on it. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, John. Good night. Good night. Good night, CB. Good night. 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 <laughs> we we'll ask Santa Claus for tomorrow like you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Mickey Rooney, Beulah Bandy, and Virginia Weidler in Young Tom Edison. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. We want to remind you that this is the time to help the 1940 drive to fight tuberculosis. Purchase your supply of anti-tuberculosis Christmas seals now. Use them on all your Christmas mail. Show that you are helping to fight this dread disease, too. Buy seals for Christmas, and you buy health for the new year. Edward Arnold will soon be seen in the Frank Capra production, The Life of John Doe. John Howard has just completed the universal picture, The Invisible Woman. Heard in tonight's play were Claire Videra as Mrs. Borden, J. Arthur Young as Higgins, Tristram Coffin as Michael, Lou Merrill as Terwilliger, Fred Mackay as Hopkins, Verna Felton as Cook, and Sally Payne, Ralph Sedan, Alan Wood, Jean Webb, and Bob Burleson. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. And this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>